One day, the enemy smashed through the defenses of the American First Army on a 45-mile front. When the Germans went into Stavelo, uh, the SS followed. They killed 157 men, women, and children. Mon grand-père, qui a perdu un de ses frères, qui a été fusillé à, à, dans un lieu euh, entre Ster, entre Ster Stavlo et Parfond, oui. Et, et, et au hasard de, ils ont, ils ont ramassé euh, une partie de la population. Ils ont mis, je ne sais plus, le nombre de personnes dans une grange. Ils ont tiré au hasard, au travers de, 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 de la grange, et puis ils, ont, ils y ont mis le feu. plaçant les, les sapins autour de, de la table, euh, on arrive à un nombre plus ou moins qui correspond au nombre de victimes civiles que nous avons eu ici à Stavlo. Voilà, je m'appelle Vincent Gaspard, j'ai 58 ans, je suis menuisier béniste. Le hasard a voulu que je sois sollicité pour réaliser un travail de commémoration du 50e anniversaire de la bataille des Ardennes. Donc c'est un travail qui a duré de octobre, plus ou moins octobre 1993, et qui devait être terminé pour le 30 avril 1994, jour de, de présentation ici à Stavlo. La symbolique aussi a voulu qu'on fasse un jumelage Stavlo-Formide en même temps. I was carrying a Tommy gun, and I stepped into this fire lane in Belgium, and there's a German soldier, and we're looking at each other. Now, he started to raise his rifle. This figure had been trained in basic training to move when somebody threatens, and I killed him. And in the meantime, the patrol found out Mac and I went up to this fellow to see if he had any maps or anything. And I pulled a picture of a woman and two little girls. And at that, this is my first kill. And all I could think was, what the heck have I done? I've killed this man. I've ruined this family that has stayed. I don't know why it stayed, but it stayed. After about two weeks, that's when the bulge really broke, uh, opened up the, the, the artillery was unbelievable. This went on for several days. And they had kids in uniform, old fellas. Uh, it was amazing. And many of the Vermont soldiers, especially, wanted the damn war to end. But several of them talked about the unconditional thing. They said, you know, you don't give us a choice. And I said, well, you've got to understand that we did not know about what was going on in the camps. Now, we went through one. And I want to tell you, 
what this was looking at, this could not understand how one man could do that to another. Bodies pile like cordwood, babies, women, and men. Um, this is a Western Christian nation. And they did that. We had 81,000 uh, casualties. Uh, the Germans had uh, 100,000 casualties. Both sides lost about 800 tanks. You know, when you talk about a battle, you can't describe the smell, decaying flesh. You can't describe arms, and legs strewn all over the battlefield. You can't describe that. It's there. And I was one of the lucky ones in the sense that up here I could handle it. It's something that stays with you. And sometimes you wonder, where is God? Why is he permitting this? Unbelievable. D'où le, le fait de compléter ce travail par, par une petite décoration appropriée. Donc ils ont recherché, euh, comment l'association m'a procuré, donc vraiment les écussons, les originaux que les, les vétérans portaient à cette période-là et, et, et qui sont installés donc sur, sur la feuille de table. Now, Christmas Day, and then in Belgium. We were going day and night. And you got to the point where you were just plain exhausted. I don't know how the hell they, they got through it. I mean, the, those kids are out there. The snow is this deep, cold as hell, and they're digging uh, foxholes. And uh, the snow would get in the foxhole, and during sometime during the day it would melt. They're standing in water, then they're standing in ice. And if a single vehicle or a couple of vehicles went through, they were dead. Because there are a lot of soldiers and people, uh, German, in that woods. Many of the units that participated in the Battle of the Bulge and that fought for the Allies during uh, many of the American units passed through Fort Meade on the way to the European Theater. And then many of those same units then, uh, after the war ended in Europe, passed back through Fort Meade. Of course, minus thousands of soldiers that passed through Fort Meade, they're today still buried yes. over in Belgium and yes. Luxembourg and, and other American cemeteries. So Fort Meade uh, started with an association uh, with the Battle of Bulge by those units passing to and then coming back. And many of those soldiers, like yourself, uh, were interested in uh, making sure that the legacy of the Battle of Bulge didn't go away. In the 60s and the 70s, when the veterans of the Battle of the Bulge assembled there in Fort Meade, they were saying, how are we going to remember this battle? What do people, what's the legacy for the future? And they say, we have to do something about it. And then they thought, we are going to have a table, a conference table. And they were together, and, and I understand, I, I came only at the end of this, but I know Alfred, Dorothy Davis, Greenville, they were all built, and they decided on a table, and they designed it themselves. And they say, we want this table as being designed by the veterans. They picked the oak trees in the forest where they fought. The oak trees were laid to mature for a couple of years. And then his father was picked out. He is an artisan, he is a craftsman. He made the table on the design, designed 
by the three or the four men of which we still have Alfred here today. And this table is the silent witness of the, one of the biggest battles, decisive battles of World War II. And it's a treasure. And his father is a great craftsman. Je suis donc le fils de Vincent Gaspard, le créateur de la table. Euh, je suis très fier de ce que mon papa a réalisé pour commémorer la bataille des Ardennes. Au nom de tous les tableaux, on, euh, on remercie les soldats américains de nous avoir délivrés de l'oppression nazie. Disons que, que rien que, que par le fait de savoir que, que pour les vétérans c'est un mémorial, ben, fatalement, ben, oui, je suis fier, oui. Mais ça a été un peu, ça, ça doit servir un peu de témoignage pour les, les, les générations futures. I want people, the upcoming generations, to understand what it takes to keep this country free. You've got to be willing to go out and fight for this country.